Okay, so the first basic rule of photography composition is to find a focal point. So a focal point is basically the thing you focus on, the most unique thing or the thing that tells the story in the photo that you want to tell. This photo is not bad in terms of lighting and technique, but there's no focal point. There's nothing for us to focus on. There's nothing that makes this interesting or helps us to remember this. So in order to do this, you find the focal point and then the basic rule of composition that we're going to cover with this tutorial is the rule of thirds. So the rule of thirds helps us to make it an interesting focal point or to use one third versus two thirds in your photo to make a dynamic, interesting image. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the focal point and making it in an interesting way. So over here we have this photo and whereas the last photo didn't have a focal point, this clearly does have a focal point and it has nothing else to really distract from it. The stars are a great backdrop for this, but it's clear from the lighting and the composition that this is the focal point. Now, Usually an amateur photographer will just put something smack dab in the middle. So this guy right here, if I were to use my crop tool and click on it, this is what we call the rule of thirds. So as you can see, the focal point is right in the middle of the image. And this rule of thirds is made up of a grid of three rows and three columns. And the focal point indices that we're going to talk about right now are this, this, this and finally this. It's always going to be a more dynamic image if you can actually put that focal point where these crosshairs meet. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of this and undo my crop. This was the original image and when I click on this now you can see that this focal point is now near this. It's not smack dab in the middle. That gives us a ton of room to really frame this focal point. So it's a lot more interesting than putting it smack dab in the middle. So let's look at this with a couple of different photos. Um, in this one, we just have a basic kitchen photo, but all of a sudden you see that this darker, heavier oven setup is right on this focal point, which helps to anchor this image. If we come over here, we see the same thing with a photographer. You have all of this in the blurry background that helps to frame her. So we're focusing on her and what is her story. And she's not smack dab in the middle, which would be super boring. Then we come over here and we see that the light is framing this bike and it's at a nice angle. And again, it's not smack dab in the middle. So hopefully you're seeing with all of these that it's using these different intersections of the rule of thirds grid in order to make more unique and interesting images. So beyond using the rule of thirds for putting your focal point on one of those four intersections to make it a little bit more interesting, the rule of thirds has another use. Okay, so we just talked about the focal point, and in this one we're going to talk about using the rule of thirds to create an interesting composition. So in this picture, we have a focal point, but weirdly enough, the whole thing is the focal point. The scenery is the focal point. And it's still, it's really, it's a good photo. It's well lit. Um, so I'm not saying it's bad, but it could be better using this composition rule of thirds. So if I click on this, what the rule of for thirds is, is now let's ignore the um, four indices that we talked about earlier. That's when you really have one focal point that you need to focus on. And this time we're going to focus on a huge portion of the picture. So what the rule of thirds is, is saying leave two thirds of the picture. Two thirds of the picture should be like the same thing or the same stuff and one third of the picture should be unique. So how this usually manifests is like two columns versus one column or two rows versus one row. Um, and with this photo, you can see that we don't see any of that proportionate composition. So let's look at how to do this. Looking back at this original photo, you can see that when I click and we see the rule of thirds, even though it's a little bit at an angle, one third is a tree and two thirds of the picture are stars. So that really creates this unique space with good um, focal point and good composition. So if we look back at this photo, this photo is a landscape. It's a great photo with a landscape. And what we have is one half sky and one half land. Well, this is making it seem like we need to focus on both. And usually what you want to do is you want to pick what is the most important part of your image. So if we click on this, it would be better to make it two thirds land because this is a horizontal composition and one third sky or vice versa 
we would want to make it, oops, let me change that. We would want to make it one third land, two thirds sky, especially if this was, you know, a really cool sunset or we really did see a lot of the galaxy, etc. So let's go ahead and see some photos that are using a very clear rule of thirds. So in this one, as you can see, two thirds of it is the land and one third is sky. Again, this one, same thing, two thirds sky, one third land, and then we have this really bright spot. So you can see that this is helping us to decide how to compose it basically. So in this one, it's unique because it's right in the middle. So again, two thirds of it should be roughly the same. So we see buildings on the left and buildings on the right. They're basically the same. And then we have these leading lines and this open space that creates that one third. We also see this in two thirds of it being buildings. And then this one third is just leading lines. Now some of these, just so you know, you can compose these later in however you crop and edit your photos. So maybe you took a huge photo of this and you didn't use the two rule of thirds, then you can come in and crop it later. So this one is where we use that middle swath or that middle row for the one third that's different and the one third that we want people to focus on. So this one's a little bit more unique because it has, you know, it's not like the sky tapes, takes up a big portion. This is the same as up here. So it's not always a perfect one third, two thirds, but the bulk and the heavy thing that we want people to focus on is the waterfall. And so that is our two thirds versus one third. Sometimes you can also see a waterfall take up one third of the space and then you can see all the open area down river from the waterfall and that would be a good use of rule of thirds too. So this one is really clean and simple. You really don't see anything other than that middle third. You can do this with portraits as well. You can have somebody on the left, on the right, or in the middle and basically the two thirds around it are going to be um, basically the same. This one, really, you see a lot of this with a lot of sunsets um, and star images as you see two-thirds of it sky. Again, with portrait photography, and this time um, it's using the one-third. Now, she does go throughout the portrait, but it's clear that we're trying to focus on here and not down on her pocket or whatever the case may be. She could have been in the middle here or in the bottom, too, especially if she was kind of looking upwards. It would be cool to put her at the bottom. And then again, a classic ocean scene. So a lot of ocean um, photos really get the two thirds, one third naturally. Um, so this is where we have a lot of texture in the top third and then just that smooth water in the two thirds. So let's see how the two things we talked about can work. So this might be what a typical image is. Um, again, not really typical because it's actually a really cool image and I'm sure it was hard to get. But in general, you're, you're used to just putting somebody in the middle and snapping the photo. So again, the two things we want to think about with rule of thirds, you can see that this picture had a lot more, is you definitely want to use one of the focal points if you have one thing that you want them to focus on. So if I go ahead and click that, now you can see that it's using those, those focal point intersections. In addition, this is actually using the two thirds. So we have one third with a silhouette and two thirds with all that empty space that kind of brings that fear factor for rock climbing. And then if we actually zoom out to what the original photo was, you can see that this is much more dramatic from further away and it still uses those two rules. You've got the intersection right here, so what we should be focusing on, and then we have one third rock and two thirds open air and ocean space. So for your activity this week, what I'd like you to do is take a photo with any camera you have, your phone, a DSLR, whatever the case may be, and I want you to take one photo that focuses on a focal point and it hits one of those indices on a rule of thirds grid and you might just have to imagine it if your camera doesn't show you that grid. Um, and two, I want you to take an image that use, uses the actual rule of thirds where two thirds of it is one thing and one third of it is the focal point. Whether it's vertical or horizontal, that's up to you.